Heading into this late Sunday afternoon matchup, the wild card game between the Seahawks and the Eagles, it made a world of sense on paper why so many people were picking the Seahawks to win. It made so much sense. And going into this matchup, the Seahawks are the better team. They finished 11-5. and five. They were this close to winning the NFC West and getting a home playoff game. You know, this very possibly could have been the 49ers in this spot taking on the Eagles instead of the Seahawks having to travel to Philly to take on the Eagles. You're looking at a Seahawks team that still has Pete Carroll at the helm, still has Russell Wilson. You know, Russell Wilson in the peak of his career, a guy with lots of big game, championship game, championship pedigree and experience. You brought back Beast Mode just in time for the playoffs. You know, you're looking at this and you're saying, you know, the Seahawks had the better record, and for all intents and purposes, and realistically, they should be, regardless of what the rules say, with the division winner getting home playoff game, they should be the one hosting this game. They're the better team, and they should win. And that totally makes sense, especially when you look at the fact that the Eagles were freaking a walking mash unit, especially with their offensive skill players. They've been without Alshon Jeffrey. There's no Nelson Aguilar for this game. Zach Ertz is coming back, sure, but you're talking about a guy with a rib injury and a lacerated kidney that he's getting over. Then you look at the offensive line, Brandon Brooks down for the year. Then Lane Johnson ends up being out for this game. It's like the Eagles can't catch a break. You know, but you look at it and you say they had started to figure it out and pull together towards the end of the season again. Feels like a little bit of a Doug Peterson coach team type of trademark. Yes, they were just the best of the worst in the NFC least. That is true, but they still ultimately won the division. And this is a team with a lot of players from that Super Bowl team. There are a lot of players that have been in the playoffs now multiple times. You know, they've got plenty of playoff experience here as well. And Carson Wentz did a good job with the limited talent that he had around him. That's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. Talking about a home playoff game, team with playoff experience, you know, and the Seahawks were kind of scuffling last month of the season. And while their defense forces quite a number of takeaways, they struggled to get after the quarterback, which certainly could benefit the Eagles with Wentz, especially considering the fact that you were without Brooks and you were without Lane Johnson on that offensive line. And that defense in general was not very good this year. This is a team that I think lost, what, three of their last four heading into the playoffs. Like, that's not a team that had a lot of momentum. They lost to the Rams, the Cardinals, and then that loss to the 49ers at Week 17 on Sunday night. So, I'm sorry, Eagles fans. I put the Jeff Jinks on your team. But I felt like, you know, so many people are pointing towards them. And even though the Seahawks had beaten the Eagles in Philly in Week 12, 17-9, you know, the Seahawks did that off of the strength of forcing five turnovers. And were they really going to be able to get five turnovers again? If they couldn't get those turnovers, even if the Eagles had to kind of play it close to the vest here, they'd maybe find a way to figure out how to get it done. And even when the game started and the Seahawks immediately marched the ball down the field, you know, when you had the Myers field goal attempt and the Eagles blocked it, I'm sitting there saying to myself, you know what? This could end up being their day. They might keep it close, make it ugly, and find a way to pull it out when all is said and done. And then it just goes to figure, and it's the perfect kind of cherry on this crap Sunday of a season for the Philadelphia Eagles of bad luck that in the first quarter, Carson Wentz, your former number two overall pick that you traded up and gave up so much for to get in that 2016 draft, who got injured, tore his ACL against the Rams in 2017 when he was trending to a MVP season, only to watch Nick Foles come in and eventually figure it out and lead the team to a Super Bowl, to then come back the next year, Nick Carson Wentz isn't starting the season yet because of the knee injury, comes back in, then eventually he goes down again to watch freaking Nick Foles figure it out again late in the year, and then the freaking Eagles beat the Bears in Soldier Field in the wild card round on the double doink. Now you come this year, and Carson Wentz is actually healthy. He's actually going to make a start in the playoffs. And then he's running in the first quarter, and he's going down. And here comes Jadavion Clowney from behind, hitting him with a good, clean shot with his helmet to the back of Carson Wentz's head. Bam! He hits Carson Wentz in the head. Carson Wentz's head then proceeds to smack against the ground. And before you know it, Carson Wentz is freaking out for the rest of the game with a concussion. And all the while, all the while, all the horse hockey crap calls 
We have seen over the past couple of seasons when it comes to unnecessary roughness, and particularly with roughing the passer, here is Jadavion Clowney that if he did this same play in college, he would have gotten ejected for targeting. Here, we don't even call a penalty, and it led to the quarterback for the opposing team, the Eagles, Carson Wentz, having to miss the rest of the game. And the people that can sit there and say, well, you know what, that just shows you can't trust Carson Wentz. And in this particular case, if you say it feels like it's always something with Carson Wentz, that to me is valid, because it seems like it always is. There's always some type of thing that crops up for we're crying out loud, the dude got concussed because he got hit in the head from behind as he was going down to the ground. A lot of other quarterbacks would have been concussed too. Like, what the hell is the dude supposed to do? So in rolls freaking 40-year-old Josh McCown straight off of a high school coaching staff to try and lead the Eagles to some miraculous come-from-behind victory. <laughs> like, you just can't make this crap up. Jay Cutler has been retired for two years, is doing reality TV, and Josh McCown is 40 years old and still playing. And that's where the hopes of the Philadelphia Eagles in this mass shooting of a team in this season, that's where the hopes lie. And even in that case, you know, all the fun you can make of it, you can say the fact is, is that the Eagles were in this game. The Eagles had chances to get, to get closer. You know, and with Josh McCown, they were able to move the ball some. Now the Seahawks came up with some big plays on defense at big time, seven sacks on the day. That certainly helped, especially some of those sacks coming at really key, important moments, especially the fourth down late in the game in the red zone. But, you know, the Eagles were able to move the ball. They were able to get into scoring position. But unfortunately for them, when they needed touchdowns with Josh McCown, they got field goals instead, and that ultimately came back to bite him in the ass. And, you know, you look at this game for the Eagles and say, even with all of that, and the injury to Carson Wentz and this and that, you know, ultimately that secondary still stinks. And when they needed to play well today, time after time after time, they came up short. You got DK Metcalf in his first ever playoff game, setting records for the most receiving yards by a player in his first playoff game. Seven receptions, 160 yards, and a touchdown. He came up huge, especially with the two bombs. The first one from Russell Wilson. He catches it, goes down to the ground, has the presence of mind to get back up and muscle his way over the goal line, touchdown. And then at the very end of the game, third and long, what are the Seahawks going to do? You look at this and you say, okay, the Eagles could end up getting the ball back here and have a chance to move it down again against scoring position. That's the way it was trending. Do you just run the ball, run some clock, and hope the Eagles don't get back down to that position? Or do you put the ball in your best player's hand and hope something good happens? Well, that's what they did. They put the ball in Russell Wilson's hands. And he throws the big bomb to D.K. Metcalf on third and long. And D.K. Metcalf comes down with it. And it's ball game. So even in a game where Travis Homer and Marshawn Lynch did nothing on the ground except for Marshawn Lynch's touchdown run, he did nothing else in this game. They were non-factors. Russell Wilson was a leading rusher on this team. You know, the Eagles fought and scrapped and clawed and did what they could to hang in. But at the end of the day, it just wasn't enough. Russell Wilson came up with too many big plays, too many big runs at key time, and they couldn't figure out how to stop DK Metcalf. And that's got to be frustrating if you're Eagles fans. And it's going to be another one of these things where you look back at the woulda, coulda, shouldas. What would have happened if some of your guys were healthy? What would have happened if Carson Wentz wouldn't have gotten concussed by Jadavion Clowney where they didn't even throw a flag on it? Like the officiating, particularly this year, feels like it's about as bad as it's ever been. Almost got us pining for the replacement rest of 2012. That's how bad this feels like. Penalties that are called that have no business being called and obvious penalties that should be called like this one that don't get called. And look, I know Eagle fans are going to be dusty and salty about this one and maybe a little bit you feel like you have the right to do so, but calm down just a little bit. Your team's made the playoffs now for three straight years. You're two years removed from the Super Bowl. I know you're Eagles fans, you're Philly, and you got to live up to a certain attitude and mindset and belief about you guys. And you got to sit there and burn everything freaking down, but it is not the end of the world, but it certainly is frustrating. And all the while, here are the Seahawks. Finding a way, you survive and you advance and you live to another day. And now good luck, Green Bay, because you got Seattle coming into town. This is a good team. Found a way to win a hard-fought road playoff win. You know, I wouldn't want to face these guys right now. 
I certainly would not want to face these guys right now. But it was an interesting cap to what was a really, really interesting and fun weekend of wildcard football. None of these four games ended up being blowouts. All four of them were interesting and intriguing in their own ways. And even this game, which was the least close out of all four of them, it was still in the balance with the Eagles and Josh McCown having the ball with a little over two minutes left deep in Seahawks territory, where if they get a touchdown and a two-point conversion, the game's time will potentially looking at either a miraculous Russell Wilson late-game drive to put him in field goal range to try and win it or go into freaking overtime. It was a fun week of wildcard football. Maybe not so much if you're a fan of the Eagles, but I guess there's always next year.